All right, we are live, and the New York Mets have clawed their way back to first place in the National League East. Our no long one sessional yet. nightmare of being in second place for a day is over. Back on top where we belong. I still smell a little bit of second place on me. Like that I can still stank. still get yeah, that stank I, off of us. Ugh. Yuck. Gross. Disgusting. Disgusting. However, luckily, no one on this podcast, nobody listening, nobody in the chat, nobody watching, all that kind of stuff freaked out because we were chilling the entire time because we've been responsibly drinking our Coors Lights all season. Just like I told you guys, there's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. And there's only one fan base that needs to chill out 24-7, and that's Mets fans. It's a it's a match made in heaven. Uh, the mountains on the bottle and cans even turn uh, blue when the beer is cold. We know that, and our souls have been blue this entire baseball season. So when you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. And not only that, not only has Coors Light been there for us all baseball season and going to be there for us at the parade in November, but we, they, you can also win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash believe. No purchase necessary sweepstakes and September 18, 2022. All 50 U.S. states of Washington, D.C. 21 and older only. Void where prohibited from rules. Visit CoorsLightSummer.com. And when we are drinking our Coors Light, eating our cake, and sipping our punch, we are going to celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. How we feeling, boys? How we feeling? We're playing bad teams. The Braves are playing good teams, and everything is fucking right in the world, huh? Uh, I have. I gotta thank two two organizations. One, the New York Mets, for being the best team that we've all ever fucking watched, <laughs> and the Seattle Mariners. Yes, <laughs> America's team. Never give up. Never say die. Finally, another franchise steps up and does what. I thought only the New York Mets could do, and that's beat the motherfucking Atlanta Braves. That comeback, mwah, I thought they were dead. I thought yep. it was over for them. You blow a game like that, your whole fucking month is ruined. Forget about the playoffs. It's over. They march right back on Kenley Jansen's bum ass and win that game. Not only does that help us a lot, that changed my opinion of the Mariners a lot. They're already a good team. They've already got a lot of good pieces. J-Rod is obviously fucking unbelievable. Our man Winker is there. Clutch as fuck. They've already got some of the pieces. If they get a little bit of the magic and the mojo in the AL, where I think things are all out of whack, man. I really do. Like, I don't know about the Astros. The Yankees, obviously, could be the powerhouse or they could be the bums. Anything can happen in the AL. A Mets-Mariners World Series would be something fucking electric so thank you to the mariners but more importantly thank you to tomas nito thank you to eduardo escobar thank you to the guys who picked this team up when they need it the most thank you to francisco lindor for owning the marlins to pete for hitting fuck bombs for ty for stepping up and going seven with like 10 k's everybody doing what they needed to do everybody doing what they've done all season except for like a three-day stretch you fucking assholes Fuck everybody who jumped off. You're not allowed back on. Fuck everybody who told me point blank on social media. It's over because of this series, because they lost to the Nationals. It's over. We're done. Fuck you. We're right back where we were when everybody was high. When we beat the Dodgers, we were a game or two up. We are right back there after like four days. And I know I shouldn't even continue to get up, up, up in arms about it because it just keeps happening. And I get, and, and me and everyone else who has a brain keeps getting proved right. And we should just like not make a big deal about these fucking morons, but it's impossible to. When I look at a fan base who's so idiotic and so moronic and childish and has never watched a game in their lives. And also, by the way, cannot detect sarcasm at all. Uh, at all. The day after we lost first place, I was having some fun on Twitter. The amount of people being like, uh, they won the World Series last year, man. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, no fucking kidding. So I just can't bite my tongue when it comes to stupid people who doubt my team when they are full of clutch winners right now. So fuck off. First place where we belong, and it ain't going to stop. It's just This is what they're going to do for the rest of the month. And it might not be sweeps, and we might have to, you know – we might, uh, we might lose a couple here or there, and we're going to all fucking cry about it every single time we lose a single game. But they're going to beat the bad teams the rest of the month. And, you know, at some point, deep down, they might not admit it, in dark places, at parties that they don't talk about, Atlanta Braves fans know that they can't beat winning teams. They know it. 
They know it deep in their bones because there's enough of a sample. And almost every single time they play a team who's good, they lose. And they're like, you cannot win a title with Kenley Jansen pitching big innings. You're not going to do it. So They're like the team that goes undefeated and then plays Alabama and then gets their fucking doors blown exactly. off in football. And it's like, well, they, they dominated their conference. They, dom- they beat all the teams they needed to beat until they came up against an actual opponent. And yep. I put it in there. The Mets have done absolutely nothing in this even small stretch for them for anyone to be like they're doing something wrong. The Mets are continuing to be the team that they were in fucking well, yeah. April. It's just the fact that you're looking across the street and going, well, that team's on a heater, but the Mets are continuing to win every series. That's you're it. freaking out about something that the Mets have no control nothing over. Do, bro, it's been that all year. How many times have we said it? The only thing wrong this year is the Braves and how much they're winning. And the minute that they didn't win, everything was fine. That's yep. all it is, man. The Mets have been the steadiest team. Legitimately, I think, I mean, you know, of course, like the 01 Mariners, and the 98 Yankees, those teams have to be steady to win that many games. But even those guys, I bet, went on more winning streaks and losing streaks than this team. The Mets have lost like seven series all year. They've had like one or two three-game losing streaks. Three three three-game losing streaks. Three three three-game, that's it. They've never lost more than three in a row. I mean, honestly, that's – I'm sure, again, I'm sure the great teams have maybe done it. Are there there many teams in history who never had more than a three-game losing streak? That's the smallest number of games for a losing streak. (laughs) They've got to be up there in in the all-time books. Of, of being one of the best, most consistent teams to never have prolonged losing streaks. So they have been so consistent all year, just steady like this, and that's what they do. If someone else does something different, better or worse, that's out of their control. All they're going to do is play like 650 ball. That should get you where you need to be. And if someone else plays 660 or 720, <laughs> then, you know, you tip your cap. But as long as there's a couple games left against teams over 500, I think they're going to be all right. Well, this is the thing, too. Those teams, say you're in a 100-win team and you don't have a lot of sweeps, that means, just like mathematically speaking, you're going to have more losing streaks, right? Because if you're not sweeping and then, you're, you know, we're just taking series. If those teams are sweeping, that means they were getting swept or having these things. And I'll tell you, I'll take this fucking two out of three instead of dealing with the people that act like the season's over anytime there's a three-game losing streak because it's fucking – and. Again, the one thing about it is the one thing I'll give everyone who is losing their mind is when the offense just goes to sleep, it's just like it's like watching paint dry. It is fucking terrible. And I I apparently I think I'm on an island here with this crew. Yesterday was a delight, not only because the Mets like basically, you know, just just took a lead and cruised. Having NFL like on the screen at the same time and being like, all right, that game is worth 10 of that games, that sports game. You, you know, know what, what I mean? though? I was thinking about that. And it's not. It's really not. Like, uh, mathematically, it is. But at the end of the day, like, it's still, it's just, it's not. Because, like, if if you win, if you win two games in the NFL, it's not equivalent to a 20-game winning streak in the majors. It's just not. You can win two games in the NFL in a row and still be an absolute dog shit team. If you're rattling off, like, 20-plus wins in the majors, you're going to be a good team. I get what you mean, but I don't. I I don't think it's as when you get down to the final games of the year and you look at who's good and who's bad. Like the winning doesn't totally translate because there's still going to be some dog shit teams in the NFL that rattle some wins. Whereas I don't know if it if it you know ten game win streaks in 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 the majors are the difference this year with the Mets is that fourteen game winning streak for the Braves. That's it. Well, I mean, of course, like streaks and stuff like that. I'm just saying like game worthiness. It's one to 10. Kevin trying to disprove numbers and math on the podcast was kind of fun to do. I I understand that that might be coming from a place of, uh, you know, darkness. You know, the gypsies out there. I just want to shout out all my gypsies out there. We are one and oh in Giants land right now. Uh, It's disgusting. It's a despicable display of of not now not now clem it's fucking <laughs> Mets season it's not it's not a football podcast it's med season <laughs> we're playing games that matter we're in a pennant race fuck football i have a buddy and um he texted me last night he's a gypsy as well and he said when was the last time the mets and the giants were both in first place at the same time oh, and 
it was a dark fucking question. I believe we got to 2008. It was uh, right before the yes. second collapse, and it was uh, it was because 2008 the Giants were a wagon, and they won. I think the uh, the opening kickoff because it was the the game after the Super Bowl when you like opening yeah. night or whatever. And I was like, man, that is 14 years of just not one day of fucking being in first place. I can't so. remember the last time. I mean, like I, I the, the the Jets. Same old Jets just getting, like, their doors blown off. Granted, the Ravens, I think, are going to be, like, very, very good. But nonetheless, like, quickly just went back to baseball mode. And I was trying to think of the last time that, like, Mets baseball took the precedent. I mean, I get – I'm trying to remember, like, in 2015. But the thing was we, like, had we had it wrapped up. So, like, those games didn't really matter we either. We had a seven-game lead in early September that year. Right. Like, so, it was yeah. like you cut – kind of enjoy both so i can't even remember the last time that i was like i gotta watch these mets games over a jets game because we're actually like you know in the hunt for the division so yeah there's Yesterday, never a- jets and mets scored the same amount so let's add up we should add up the points every week and then see what the jets score on sunday and see who's ahead by the time the playoffs go i think they could outscore the jets for real for real when this I- offense is cooking i, I mean the jets are just you know, Flacco was like, "They this team needs to believe that they're a good team." Well, you know, they're not, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to uh, to do that. It's like, yeah, we need to just play with our imaginations more. Okay, Joe. Yep, yeah. and I have to say this too: it, it's not as much about uh, like football. It's just I realize football is like taking a little bit of the edge off me because during like those like couple of days of just shit baseball, it was like gutting me. At least when there's just enough things for my dumb brain to get distracted by, it makes it hurt a little less. And again, the team's playing well. And Kev, you thanked all these people. You thanked Eduardo Escobar. You thanked Tomas Nito. Basically, everyone but Darren fucking Ruff. Right? Uh-huh. Thank us. Thank us. Tomas Nito is batting. 381 and hit his first home run of the season since the picture of me and you hit the internet since we were chopping it up really? at the dugout our girl jocelyn asked she goes what you know what what's nito stats since this uh, meeting occurred and we fixed tomas nito we, we made him an offensive we, fucking him up. we made i watched him i watched him hit batting practice that day i said this guy's got some hits left in that bat right there he's going deep that was a bomb bro dead center just fucking crushed it and i say this every time the fact that he's batting 225 blows my mind because i swear to god every game he's getting hits in big spots either starting rallies or scoring runs he's always hitting i don't know where these outs are coming from because tomas nito puts the ball the bat on the ball every fucking time and also i gotta give a shout out to eduardo escobar he he has not been steady like the team has been it's been a lot of ups and downs but at the end of the day like did you expect that much more than like I, I you know were, were we expecting like a a four war player? He was like he's he did he plays what he's getting paid. He played he maybe a little under his like usual production, but given like how hot he's also been at times, I think at the end he's been totally fine. Not everyone on your team is going to be like great all year long. He's an average baseball player. That's the best way to say, it, and that's all we need at third like, base. That's and they, that's I mean that's we 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 never had that at third. And so, like, guys like Nito and Escobar, it's like not everyone's going to be Lindor and Pete and competing for batting titles and all this shit. You just need those kind of guys. And they do what happened well. to him was the oblique injury. He goes down. He did whatever he needed to do to get ready, and then he came back, and it was like maybe it was bothering him before that because he's trying to sure. hit left and couldn't hit shit. So, all of a sudden, he gets a couple of days off, and next thing you know, well, he's, he had never home runs, runs last year. Like, you he only has 17 this year, so he's got some pop. Yeah, It's, you know, the oblique – but maybe there was something else bothering him. You're dinged up. Not remember, enough. To remember when he had to go to the hospital back in June? Yeah, I have right. no idea. I thought he was going to die. Not like maybe, maybe this is as good as it's. We're going to like after the season, going to find out that he was dealing with all sorts of issues, and and he was just like a gamer and never said anything about it. We're all assholes. But I mean, when he does, when he does come through, he comes through big. And same thing with Nito. And so I'll take the average guys who are clutch. All day, every day. And then you have, you know, your superstars at the top to get it done. Yeah. And, and the thing about Escobar, too, like you said, he's average, but he does like he can field well. He runs the bases. He's he's like so like compact and short. He just fucking flies, man. And and like you said, he has some pop in his bat. All those things combined. And they didn't sign him to a massive deal, obviously. And yeah. they knew Beatty was coming up from the minors. So they even the way the team is built, even the Marte contract, the Canna contract, they are not these long term contracts. That's what happens when you can like 
buy above average players or average players and you don't have to break the bank or just have some shit guy out there. We're like a real baseball club. This is how you're supposed to build a baseball team. Yeah, Enjoy yeah. this guys. This is what it fucking is all about. I can't say this enough fucking times. Um, I guess Mark Vientos is the only other fucking guy to touch on this weekend. Well, no, wait, one more, other, one, one other guy, Brandon Nimmo dollar mm. per, you know, uh, pr- production per dollar spent has got to be through the fucking roof on this guy. That, he, he he hits – somebody tweeted this to me uh, after his home run. He doesn't hit many, but when he hits them, he fucking smokes them. He's always hitting no doubters. And, I mean, that – when he, when he got up for the last time the other day and they showed his, you know, the bottom third, and it was just like all – every every at-bat around the bases. Like, he produced the fuck out of this weekend. And, and when, like, when he's going – He's one of those guys who I feel like as Pete and Lindor go, so go the Mets. But also when, when Nimmo is really producing in the field and at the plate, plate I feel like you, you would probably see that they're playing their best baseball when Nimmo is – when he's like grinding out bad uh, pitchers and like – you know, what was weird about that little mini blip on the radar, they did kind of get away from what they do. They stopped mm-hmm. taking long at-bats. They stopped – you know, they, everybody was swinging at the first pitches – and like, I don't know if that's because they were pressing or, you know, what I, I don't, what do you, I, I personally feel, I don't think you should ever, I would go Todd Zeal with it and never swing at the first pitch. I would always rather make the pitcher throw at least a couple pitches, at least work the count a little bit. And if it's, if it's a chance, it's one and oh, like you're already in a hitter's count. Very, very, very rarely do I think you should swing at the first pitch, especially if there's anybody on base, if, if there a walk has been issued, if, you know, there's any reason to, uh, and I, I, it was a couple times during that three game losing streak. He was swinging at the first pitch right away. It was driving me bananas, but I love when they work, you know, a hundred pitches in four innings and get to the bullpen. And that only happens if you take those first pitches every time. Um, but and I say the people are like, you know, Pete, Pete's also hit like a ton of home runs on first pitches and, and Jeff McNeil's average is really high on first pitches. So I, I mean, the number, right. Shout out Tico, but Sometimes I'm like, if, if we just had a team-wide rule to always do it, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, and especially when you're dealing with, uh, you know, certain umps that might be clowns. Did you see the whole oh. thing with Angel Hernandez where they oh. turned him <laughs> Dude, I actually missed it at the time. It was my mom's birthday. And uh, by the time I, I they were – when Gary was recounting it, I was like, what – what happened here when they were talking? They're like, it's just mathematics. The space is bigger than a baseball. It's not possible. <laughs> that was unreal, man. Shout out to Max getting getting run like that. That is a uh, that that's the kind of shit. If I was like a pitcher on the bench, like you know, no shot of playing, I would do that kind of shit all the time. Because I think it oh, requires, yeah. you know, I, I'd be I, every game that I'm not involved in. I saw the tweet and it said Max Scherzer has been ejected and I did like a double take and I was like, wait, is this an old tweet? Like what the, like, you know, when your Twitter timeline, it goes to like the other one where it's not in chronological order. I'm like, is this from like three months ago? Is Max even in the dugout with the team? Sure enough. And uh, the SNY booth, SNY booth in general, or the SNY crew had themselves a hell of a weekend because we had the Angel Hernandez where they had the clown and then it just transitioned to Angel as Gary was ripping them apart. And our boy Frank the Tank, Got motherfucking eviscerated by Gary, mm. Keith, and Ron, or just Gary and Ron, right? Well, see, I think this is. I got to give my credit to the the cameramen because I think Gary and Ron are just talking about the Twitter world, and that's when the cameraman who knows Barstool and knows Frank and shit goes, "Oh shit!" Like now is the time to do it. There's no way. I don't think they're all coordinating. If they are, then I really tip my cap. <laughs> but Gary, Keith, and Ron talking about. There's two groups of Twitter, the ones who support the Mets and the ones who come out when they lose. And that's a uh, Ron going, yeah, they're a bit darker. They're a bit darker. And as they're saying that, you just see Frank sitting there with his arms folded on his belly like the fucking super villain that he is. <laughs> I mean, could not be better production. Give them an Emmy. Yeah, they're crushing it right now. It, everything's just hitting fucking beautiful. And for the record, the New York Mets, the 2022 New York Mets, have more wins on September 12th than the 2007 New York Mets that have been fucking quoted 8 billion times by fucking loser Mets fans. They have more wins than them in on September 12th. So I don't want to hear another word about 2007 Dude, for the rest of my he, life now. Here's all you need to say for everyone who's like, this is like 2007. Who would win in a matchup? 
between the 2022 <laughs> Mets and the 20, 2007 Mets? Just ask yourself that. Let's say you played a five-game series, seven-game series. It would be an evisceration with this pitching and, and, the, and the bullpen. Like, forget about it. There's just no comparison, especially if you just if you actually took the way the 2007 Mets played in September. It, it, there's no comparison. It was, And even if there is, it's so long ago. Like, there's, it's like three regimes ago. You know, if it was like last year or a couple of years ago, fine. But, you know, those demons have been exercised by a billionaire – with an art, with an art collection. I don't even think there's been hired and fired like three times by the Mets since. Right, that's like, how long ago. Yeah. I don't even think there's an active player left in baseball from the 017. Maybe yeah. Joe Smith. If he's oh no, he's 08, so not even him. Yeah, it's not uh, even. Yeah. I, you know, unless Julio Franco's out there in some league, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm looking at the at the roster here just to see if there is anyone that was like young, like fuck, Lastings Millage forgot he was on that team. Ruben I don't think Gotay. anybody. Yeah. Sight unseen. Car- as soon as he showed up, I was like, I'm getting Lastings Millage vibes from that dude. I don't know what yeah. it is. He's got like the big chain. The team's winning like nine nothing. He's like pouty in the dugout. I'm like, fuck this dude. If he's yeah. that's the reason that's taking so long. Like, don't yeah. come in and be a downer. Dude, that was as bad as a debut as you can have. Your whole yeah. family in the crowd, you go 0 for 5. That first at bat was like, they even said it. Keith was like, oh, yep, you just got introduced to your first big league fastball. Like, he, he was yeah. a mile behind that. Uh, there are some fucking names on this 2007 roster, man. First of all, this is one all of my right. favorite things to do is just say <laughs> baseball players' names. I love it. Yeah. That's like that old tweet. Matt, guys will just go around saying old, old just sports say players' names. names. <laughs> um, it's the truest thing ever. So, uh, first of all, Carlos Gomez is, was on that yeah. team. So, he retired. His last year was 19, which, by the way, the, he, 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 where he was like the center of our universe, and we thought he was going to be an all-star. He ended up uh, with a 198 batting average that year. So, Dude. that's the old Mets. That's the 2019 that is Mets. So that's the Wilpon Mets. There are there yeah. are times like that when I think about like when when I think about how Yankee fans and other fan bases are like you guys are so fucking embarrassing, and in the moment I'm like what do you like no we're not and then I think back to like we were sucking Carlos Gomez's dick and like so excited about Rajay Davis like I was like Jesus fucking Christ these guys suck. Obviously the lineup is the, the lineup is pretty consistent you know Laduca Delgado Alou was the guy who replaced our boy Xavier Nady. Uh, some other guys in here Jeff Conan didn't remember he was on that team uh, Julio Franco Ali P Ali P still playing that's got to be the only one right Ali Ali is still playing shit that's right so yeah. this the no Ali's been reti- Ali I think uh, the he's the back, no the no, done- DFA him back in like April. Oh. Well, all right, but he was playing this yes, year. He was playing this year, so you can count it. Wait, okay. give me some others, because I would have, I would have like gunned to my head. I would have told you Jeff Conine was absolutely not on the two thousand nine seven Mets. I, I do not remember that at all. I didn't think Julio Franco was. He was though. You, you, I, knew, you I remember that, that one because he was my boy. Um, let's see, Sandy Alomar. Yep, not they remember, that. remember that. Yeah. Uh, Jason Vargas, young Jason Vargas, pre time traveler. Jason now that's Vargas. a curse name we do not <laughs> speak of. Dude, that holy shit. Chan Ho Park. Yes, <laughs> Chan Ho. Holy moly. Wow. Um, and then yeah, it's just kind of the the, the more pen. you say, the more the more likely it becomes that we collapse in 2007. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Se- what are we doing hockey at all? Give yeah. me give me the uh, the bullpen names there. Uh, let's see the bullpen, the bullpen. So the guys who were actually doing shit: Joe Smith, Showen Weiss, <laughs> Pedro Feliciano, R.I.P. Heilman and Billy Wagner. That was the guys who were actually doing it. Jorge Sosa, Gior- uh, Guillermo Moda. That was the other guy I wanted to yes. mention. Guillermo Moda was on that guy? team. Uh, he tried to kill Piazza, right? Oh, <laughs> he kept throwing like, at his head. Did he like actually kill somebody? Let me look that think, up before I slander someone's name. I think you're thinking of the um the guy in the Orioles, right? Wasn't there uh Uga Thurbina? Wasn't that a Uga Thurbina yeah, thing? That guy he actually did he like kidnapped somebody. Like lit a dude on fire or something. There was some crazy yeah, shit yeah, going yeah, on at Ugi Urbina's house. Culture. Um, so that's kind of the that's what we're dealing with the 2007 um Mets. And for the record, like we can all puff out our chest right now, now that the Mets won a couple games. We were discussing how we were going to break any potential curses. That came up, and one of the things we talked about, in full honesty, was having someone on the podcast and or killing someone on the podcast, and that person 
was this guy who honestly, I don't even know if it was the 2007 collapse or the 2008 collapse because the 08 collapse dealt with then the burial of, you know, P- Seaver to Piazza and that fucking funeral scene they basically had. This fucking guy, this Mets fan, oh, is the yeah. symbol of the, the late 2000s Mets. I, I do remember, um, I think when they made it back to the World Series, they, they, they like the news, like Daily News, like did a, a profile on him or something. I think they did track this guy down again at some point. I would love to have him on the pod. Uh, and this was like in the middle of the, the three game losing streak. People were sending this picture out. And I was like, maybe we got to have this guy on, do a seance or something, reverse the juju. I mean, this Ease guy. his pain. Ease his pain. It's fucking uh, feel the dream shit. <laughs> this guy has gotten like more, more FaceTime than like any other New York fucking character ever. It's an all time New York picture. Like you, I, that instantly takes me back. There's two things I remember from that year, that picture and Francesa. He was doing his Francesa thing, going through the schedule. And he was like, they got Philly, 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 Atlanta, Atlanta, Marlins, Philly, uh, you know, whatever, like just rattling them off. And, and he's kind of got like a pen in his mouth and he's like, you know, and I think he was talking to Mons and Mons is like, they're going through wins and losses. And he's like, so what do you think they're still going to make it? And Mons was like, yeah. And he goes, I do too. I don't know why. I just, I just think they're still going to make it for some reason. And I think it was the beginning of the tank mush when he, when he said that those are the two like memories and images from that year just burnt into my brain is that guy and Mike saying it was all going to be okay when it absolutely fucking wasn't. (laughs) What a horrible time. So we're going to bury 2007 with that picture with the 89th win of the season again on September 12th with roughly a month of the fucking season left for the goddamn lunatics out there. Uh, like we said, even the bottom of the rotation, Carrasco and Taiwan got their W's. The bullpen is extremely well rested right now. Uh, I don't know if Edwin Diaz is even with the team basically at this point. Uh, and then the only the only negative again, I think Vientos is he's an actual person. He really didn't do much. Did he end up getting any hits or anything? I, I again, I no, was kind of in and out. Over same with Ruff. Over so. <laughs> I, I mean, Vientos is whatever. You got called up. You know, you, you, not everyone hits right away. Not everyone can be Beatty. And hit a home run his first day, but Darren Ruff. I know, I know. You said Meek that his numbers were like. Oh, I'm so dead, I was dead wrong about Darren Ruff. I'll be completely no, but, out there with that. Yeah, but from a point of view of like what Epler was thinking, like I get it if his numbers were good. He is playing so bad, so bad, so bad. Like like everything, the worst at bats possible. Like you know. Not getting runners in from third, grounding into double plays, you know, big spot strikeouts on three pitches. Like it is, he he can't possibly see any legitimate at bats down the stretch here and in the postseason, right? Someone said like, I think he's going to be a postseason hero. I'm like, I, I hope he's not even on the fucking roster. There's a better be. chance of Eduardo Escobar being a postseason hero. Well, yes, that's, there that's is. obvious. I'm just being obvious yeah. here, but like. Yeah. There's a better chance of me being a postseason hero at this rate. There's a better chance of James McCann being a, po- a postseason hero than Darren That's Ruff. That's awesome. That Honestly, way. it's between the, those two guys. Yeah. And then when, you, when you're mentioning – anytime your name's mentioned in the same stratosphere as James McCann, you know you fucked up. Yeah. And plus, we gave away four players for the guy. And uh, every time you look at it, you're like, well, at least he's not J.D. Davis. But then you look at J.D. Davis and you're like, they're basically the same player right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the Epler mode. I'm gonna have to like believe that it'll come in the biggest spot. I, it, we're at the point where yesterday I saw Ruff was in right field, and I'm like, all right, maybe he just needs to play right field for the day to kind of like get the back going. That's the kind of like mental gymnastics I'm playing with myself. So, uh, but he spoke no, that down the line, and then it was an unconventional double play, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the well, biggest anyway, thing I of all, wanted, I, I just looked this up real quick because we were just talking about it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten teams in, in baseball history that only had a three game losing streak. And all of wow. them are like the 28 Yankees, the 32 Yankees, uh, the, the most recent ones. It's the 03 Braves, the 05 Cardinals, and the 2016 Indians. Hmm. So um, only, and then and like the 90, then you got to go back to 88, 87. Like, we're not counting those like 1800 level teams. Tungsten yeah, yeah. Armoniel or whatever. Back out of the 1888 Cleveland Spiders. We don't care about <laughs> right, that. Yeah. 
But so, I mean, rare fucking air to be one of the only 10 teams in baseball history so far, at least don't jinx it, to only have a three game losing. And the Braves are right there with us because they've only lost three games in a row, too. So, fucking assholes. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. However, the Braves did back, lose two back or three. In June, they didn't have any back in like April and May. They didn't have anything over three. They have two, three. They must have had a bunch of three game losing season. streaks. Then. They've had a bunch of two game losing streaks. They've only had two three gamers, one wow. entirely to us. And one to the Cardinals and, and Rockies. That's it. So in, in April and May, it must have just been like win, loss, loss, win, loss, yes. loss, win, loss, yes. loss, win, loss every fucking day. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. So, but nonetheless, the Braves are fucking on the West Coast now, and that's big boy baseball. You have to play. They had to play a good Mariners team, and then obviously they got the Giants, who the Giants could definitely be a pain in the ass. We know that. They'll yeah. wreck your night. Kyle fucking watching Dom Smith drop fly balls in fucking one and in the shout morning. shout out Wilmer Flores. She's got a contract extension. Yeah. 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 Uh, Wilmer, really? Wilmer can help us out. <laughs> that, that's the two, thing I wanted to say. For a third? That guy has, like, survived, man. Yeah. That's what I Guys. wanted to say, too, for the, the people who are like, why didn't we trade for Wilmer instead of Darren Ruff? The team has to want to trade the guy. And if they just yes. gave him a contract, they didn't want to trade him. Like, I, it's fucking like talking to idiots, like babies sometimes. Like, to my kids, I'm like, what are you talking about? It doesn't make yeah, any yeah. sense. Or just, like, call up and say, we want that guy. It's not fucking yeah. DoorDash. You're bad. We're good. We should, want trade him. We're good. should trade for Shohei Otani. I don't know what Epler yeah. thinking about. Yeah, yeah Epler, man. I just can't figure it out. It's the fucking worst. Uh, By the way, is, is, uh, is Juan Soto still like garbage? What's going on? He's still like pretty meh. I think he's like in a three for 39 he's... skid. And, and you, put, you put on a Padres jersey and then you just start playing that. It's very weird. Yeah. You're slumming it with the Nationals in D.C. and then you get to go to beautiful sunny San Diego. It's like he's probably yeah, out of the he's... Nestle he's... district. Like he's getting after it. <laughs> he's not he's used like, to well, being on a next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. jeez. Uh, Juan Soto is having a tough season and probably a great life right now. That's kind of the, the trade he had to make right along the way. Um, but in the, the the Braves went to Seattle. Funny how that works. Braves play a team that's over 500, lose a series. Uh, by the way, fucking so obviously the story is Jansen blows the save. Our boy Julio comes through. Braves, uh, Mariners take the win. That motherfucking Paul Seawolf. I don't give Frank the Tank a lot of thought about, you know, they're, they're dancing together. They're, they're, they're fucking dancing. Buster Olney's throwing a parade. I wouldn't put it past Paul Seawald tanking his own playoff bound team to fuck the Mets because this guy has an ax to grind against us, apparently. He blows Jesus. the same. And then Kenley Jansen does the same because he absolutely fucking stinks. And uh, I don't know. I, that, I think between the Mets taking the series, the Braves like coming back. What was it, Phil? You were watching the game. Was it 6-1 with two outs? Is it was 6-1 with two outs in the ninth and second oh. and third. Michael Harris homer. Um, no, it was 6-2. Michael Harris homer, A. Rosario single, and then Robbie Grossman home run. So, Disgusting. Robbie Grossman. It was bordering on like some black magic type shit. If they won that game, I'd be like, there's literally no other team that's going to help us except for the Mets helping themselves. But Dude, when I, you go to the West Coast, you go, you're guaranteed to have a walk off loss at least one of those. Every, games exactly. the yeah, yeah, every time. time. That's just baseball. I would say that walk off being that game, like to, to just bounce right back, that really shows Kenley Jansen sucks so fucking bad because that team should be. So deflated and so fucking dead. The fact that Julio just goes out there and then uh, Suarez to end it. I mean, that was – I would have bet – the. I, I would love to have known, like, live what, what the number was there because uh, I would have lost all my money on that. I would have bet the fucking house. He's maybe responsible for, like, a fifth of their losses since June 1st, Kenley Jansen. What are they doing with – like, what, why? You know, like, if you have that bad of a reliever, just stop using him and – you know what I mean? Like – just stop. It makes no sense, but I hope they keep him in the closer role. Let, have him really? face the best hitters in the lineup every time. Love uh, it. Really? Everyone, like uh, people who are just watching us familiar, are probably saying the same things for you. It's like, why do they just keep wheeling this guy out there? Like, just oh. stop using yeah. him. But it, it's one of those that, things, it, you know, we're just so used to – we were so used to that brand of baseball. It's just like this guy pitches the ninth, whether he's good or bad, no matter what. And then it's just like, well, if someone's bad, they shouldn't play anymore. Uh, you know. It's that this simple. is what I love to say. He leads the league in antiquated stat like saves. Meanwhile, Buck's like, yeah, we'll run Diaz out there in the seventh because the only way you can get to the ninth is if you get all the good guys out. So That's continue true. to use him, please. He leads the league in saves. Okay. Keep that up. 
Oh, I, that, that is a dream. That is some old school Mets shit right there. I love when other teams act like we used to act. Thank God. Um, so we're getting some, so moving on to the cub series cubs are next. Cause again, I, I, I've kind of just been up in like La La land. I didn't know where it was going to go after this series here on the road. The cubs are back. We're back at city field. And if we're back at city field, that means we got to go welcome the boys home. And if you're getting tickets to the Mets game, you got to go to game time to get your tickets. It is the exclusive ticketing app of Barstool sports game time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and show. And they guarantee the lowest prices. I believe our boy KFC actually saw the cubbies out in Wrigley with game time. Yes, is sir. That- well, I was at, uh, Sat right down the uh, right field line. It was beautiful. Saw Wrigley for the first time. Oh, second time. That's a beautiful thing. So go. you can go back now, see the, the Cubbies in uh, New York. I'm sure there'll be a good uh, Cub crew as well. They'll probably just be drinking, just, you know, trying to get through the game. So what you have to do if you want to go, again, get those Stu Finer seats without paying Stu Finer prices, download the Game Time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code BELIEVE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price is guaranteed. We are on clinch watch right now as well. I believe eight is the magic number right now for a clinching. So uh, start looking wow. into that so you can get and watch uh, the Mets celebrate. Uh, I- the playoffs are so fucked now. I don't understand how any of this stuff works. I, no. I just want to get into the postseason. Um, and then we actually we actually have we do have Barstool the ballpark on Saturday, Saturday against yep. the Pirates, right? So Gary Cohen bobblehead complete the collection. Yep. Wow. So, Look at that. We've had a we've had a lot of luck with good uh giveaway days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been absolutely incredible. We've had awesome giveaways the whole time. And uh the games, I think we like it's either been really good or really bad for the most part. You have like epic wins or just like absolute blowout losses. So I think, I hope we can take it to the pirates who uh, as of now it's Bassett Wilson schedule for Saturday night. So you go out, get your drink on, um, just go to the, uh, we got to believe just Google um, Barstool the ballpark Mets and you should be able to get out. This will be the last one of the season uh, until yeah, right you know, now for anyone on YouTube, just click that link. Yep, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Uh, the Cubbies, we got Bassett tonight, Jake tomorrow, and then uh, is it Trevor Williams? You think you think they go Trevor Williams back you on? Said that they're debating Trevor Williams or David Peterson. I think I don't know which way you go. I mean, both of them have been fine options. I mean, Peterson just had a bad night Friday. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was gonna say I would pick Trevor Williams, but that's probably just because of most recent Peterson yeah. events. I just like Trevor Williams, though. I don't know why. I just like him. He just gets buried, too. It's like we never really use him as a bullpen option. He's always the cleanup guy for whenever a starter fucks up. I don't get that either. I I really thought thought that he was going to be a potential bullpen arm as well. Uh, Now, things have kind of, like, shaped up a little bit with the bullpen as of late. But um, I thought, like, yeah, let's use McGill. Let's use Williams. But I do feel bad. He's just kind of, like, in no man's land. Waiting I for him. We up. have him every time. I forget we have him, and they run him out there for like four great innings, and you're like, yeah, yeah, he's we do an it. indispensable yeah. part of the team. This yeah. year. Like, and no matter what, what situation they need him for, need him to start a game on three days rest or start in two Done. weeks. Like, he's always out there. He comes in, and it like the forecast of like the next three games changes because yeah. he saves the rest of the bullpen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's what they like, exist over the years too, because they've had mop up guys that just get shelled for an inning and a third, and it's like, well, we got to burn more arms. He also, uh, when he came in the other day, when they left in Cookie, and he like blew, that game blew open. He came in and like right away shut down that batter, end of the inning, stopped the fire. Like he is kind of like you know whatever the circumstances are, he he still gets the job done. So Trevor Williams appreciation post for sure. I believe. I I I, th- I know Trevor's brother follows me on Twitter. I know he's a huge stool. I believe Trevor's a big stool. I think uh, like Carl and them they were pretty cool with him back in the day. So I always like the guys that support us for sure. So shout out Trevor Williams. Um, and the Cubs, for the record, no idea what I'm dealing with with the Cubs right now. I, I I'm reading the we have Assad, Samson, and Smiley as the three pitchers uh, lined up for this week. I know Drew Smiley just from like years past. Couldn't tell you, Phil. What am I thinking about Assad and Samson? I have. No idea what kind of pitcher Assad and Samson are. All I know is wow. we should be able to hit them if we're on a roll at the last two games. Pirates Phil has no fucking clue. You think they'd probably, you know, cross passes? No. Meek, his... Meek doesn't know a baseball team. They don't exist. They're not fucking real. <laughs> that, I, like, that's cool. 
how has Sod and Samson ever crossed paths with the Pirates on a I think we actually had game? we faced Samson back in July. That may have been the the easy this, game of the Cup series. Gotcha. This needs to be a beatdown. This needs to yeah. be like all out assault. I don't want to like. Is this four or three? Three. three. Okay. I think it's, we need a three game sweep here. This is who we're dealing with. So Assad, Samson, and Smiley, and then you're. I'm just sorting by war. These are who we're dealing with on your uh, 2022 Chicago Cups. Uh, Nico Horner, Ian Happ, Wilson Contreras. Right? We know. You know, we know he's going to hit home run. You oh, know he's going to. I'm going to be dreading that if he hits a home run. Down here, I was like, oh, they should have traded for him as if he wasn't like four fucking Phil, teams wanted him. Kevin Phil, take anyway. it to the fucking bank, brother. Wilson Contreras going deep this week, no doubt. Take it to the Barstool Sportsbook. That's what Phil's going to do. He's going to emotionally <laughs> edge himself with uh, the – and that w- we would have been fucking running to the hills crying about Contreras, how yeah. – I think Contreras is out. I just Googled it. I don't know. He had an MRI he... three days ago. Did he? Okay, well, that, that's the, the okay, only yeah, thing that doesn't matter. Play. Is if he doesn't he play. play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say a Suzuki, Patrick Wisdom, those are just kind of the guys we just uh, go for the, the war and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, has to be a beatdown. It's like with the Mets, it's like, what's beatdown? It's like two out of three because it's like, it's like sweeps just don't really happen with this team. I know, but I know. It would be but nice. Like, yeah, you're right. I mean, history would, history would tell us that it's just going to be two out of three again. Um but there's just every no reason that it can't because they're yeah. You, yeah. I'm looking across and going, I don't think the Braves are necessarily going to sweep the Giants. So if we can pick up another game, we yeah. have to just sweep because we don't know which game the Braves are going to lose, obviously. Right. Leading into the Philly series, we can make up some like actual room if we could start mm-hmm. getting things going now. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it's Cubbies for us, then and then the Pirates, and then again right. looking at the Braves, it goes Giants, then to the Phillies. So that's going to be, you know, they have six games tough here. We got to just put the put the fucking pedal to the metal and try to step on their throats a little more. And helping us with that will be the return of our beautiful boy Louis Guillaume. He's coming back, boys. I I, I kind of just was like whenever whenever he comes back, I thought I think when the injury like happened. It was like last week of September was kind of the timeline, but here we are, uh, September twelfth, back with the squad. And, and I um, think he was batting like, like five for twelve in in his Triple A stint, so like he's been you know performing well. Not that that really matters, but swinging the bat good. Let's go. Bring it. so now, so now, what does that mean? That uh, with with Marte out and Louis back, what is we this? How move, does he- we may move McNeil to right field some days. I'd imagine too to play right. Norman so- second. So Guillaume at second, Keith Escobar at third. What and 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 are you even thinking about getting Vientos at bats anymore, or are you just like whatever? Only for lefty, so I wouldn't see him till Wednesday versus Drew Smiley. Right. Yeah. Or right. off the okay. bench. I, if we had to face a lefty at the bullpen, I want Vientos to take the bat before Darren Ruff. Uh, Absolutely. Let's give it a shot. And see what he's got. Yeah. 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 Um, we're, we're officially at that point, I think. All right. Marte. Marte's hurt. Yeah. McNeil. McNeil was promised a car by Francisco Lindor, apparently. That's what our boy Kyle told us before the season started. Going into so, the season, he said, if you win a batting title, I will buy you a car. And then he said, he turned around, there were like cameras in the clubhouse. He goes, they have it on tape, so they can run it back. And I will buy you a car if you want it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you know, he's, he's like third in the NL, but I think it would take a, a fucking incredible streak and an incredible uh, cold streak for him to catch Goldschmidt or whoever it is, right? Goldschmidt and Freeman are both ahead of him. He right. has like, Freddie's really at, right? at 331, Goldie's at 325, Jeff's at 322. Oh, all right. I thought it was like 315. All right, it's 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 within it's within reason. And that's not that's not and he's been fucking hot as shit. I just can't believe it's so funny that like Lindor and him, their history together is very funny after the fighting and they're not getting along. And then to be honest, I think that's kind of a dick move. I know that's crazy. But doesn't that feel like very like I'm the parent, you're the kid sort of thing? Like that doesn't feel like you do that to your equal. You know what I mean? You don't turn yeah. to like a, another fellow superstar and say, I'll buy you a car. That's a very like I'll I'll break you off some of my chump change. It's a kind of a backhanded way. You know what I mean? I'd be like, thanks, but no thanks. I don't need your fucking 
You know, I don't, I don't need a Dodge Charger from you. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to tell myself in my head that it was like they were kind of busting each other's balls. He's like, I'm going to win the, yeah. the batting title. It's like, you win the batting title, I'll get you a car. Like, just very offhand, off the yeah, cuff. Like, I but hope it, that McNeil had, like, car trouble or there, there's something with McNeil, McNeil's car. And they were talking about the batting title and it all kind of came together in, like, a funny way. Yeah. But I definitely think that's a, little- a bigger dick move than Carlos Beltran telling John Neese he needs a nose job. <laughs> <That'll> nose job? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, legendary shit saying I will pay for your nose job. Get rid of that beak on your face. Meanwhile, he's walking around with that mole that has like a whole face on it. Uh glass glass houses, Carlos. Glass houses. Big time glass houses move there. Um, so McNeil, McNeil has a hundred less at bats than Freeman and fifty less than Goldschmidt. So it's kind of like in his court to he could get his average up a little easier than you know anything else yeah. so it's like you do that and if the baseball gods smile upon you you're fucking money and again you're facing uh cubs pitching followed by pirates pitching so jeff uh go do the fucking thing right oh, now nuts. and we're at, the, we're at the point now with mcneil i don't ever want to see him taking it like remember when he was like not facing lefties and stuff at some points like he, like buck would kind of like play be every fucking every day every like every team no matter what and Nito, no more bunting Nito. I don't care what his batting average is. And, you know, the dope point. <laughs> Just fucking let the boy hit. Let the boy hit right now, Buck. Um, so, again, we got we got uh, three against the Cubs, and this was the Kyle stat. 28 and 40 on the road and 3 and 10 in their last 13 games. So, at this point, if you can't do it now. You're never going to do it. Got to believe. For real. Got to believe. Got to believe. Got to believe. Oh. 